John Petrucci. Good afternoon. Wow, we're really like packed in here, right? You must be Thank tired. <laughs> yeah. That's a long road trip. I'm That's a long road trip. Yeah. yeah. What's that? I'm your number one fan. Thank you so All right. Much. So, uh, the first thing we have to do is. is well. Nobody wants to see me. We'll take a picture of you guys. Uh, you know what? Should I do a, 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 a panoramic? Uh, okay, get ready. Ready? All right, go. Oh, this is going to be awesome. This is really cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. now, do you guys like do the whole Twitter, Facebook? Yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. So if you follow me and any, any of that stuff, you'll get something right now. Let's see. Instagram, how's that? Does, I, it, does Instagram do uh, panoramic shots? Yes. No? I didn't know you have Instagram. They don't do panoramic shots. All right, here we go. I'm picking it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's kind of annoying. It's only going to get some of you. All right. What effect should I use? X Pro 2? What? Valencia? All right, Valencia. And then, uh, hold on, I need a caption. I, I have it prepared though. Hold on. This is really exciting, isn't it? You have to wait for me to do this. <laughs> it'll, it'll be totally worth it. Alright, there it is. Okay. Get ready, it's gonna come right at you. Go. Failed! You're absolutely right, there's no reception. All right, you, got, you really want to wait for me to get Wi-Fi in? All right, here we go. I'm so glad that uh, you guys came all this way. All right, Dynamite. Here we go. No password. All right, guys. Retry. Finishing up, it's up. So, thank you for uh, coming out this afternoon. Uh, I'm really, really excited that there's a brand new guitar center here in Times Square. It's so cool. It's really, really, really cool. I love, uh, obviously, I'm a New Yorker. I love New York. We love coming here. love this whole area, and it's just really great that this store is here. So, thank you. Um, so, I'm, I'm really happy uh, and honored to help break it in, I guess. Um, so, that's part of the reason I'm here. So, thank you, Guitar Center. Um, and the second reason is I have this brand new guitar called the Majesty that I'm going to play and talk about this afternoon. This is uh, a, a, another guitar in the line of guitars that I've come up with, with working with Music Man for about 15 years now. And uh, it's just an unbelievable guitar, so I'll talk all about that as well. Um, I don't have a band with me, <laughs> but uh, no Mike Mangini. He's small, but he can't fit into my guitar case. <laughs> But uh, I brought my laptop and I got uh, my version of karaoke. It's Dream Theater karaoke. Um, what what I always do when we when we mix an album is uh, I always request a version of the songs without guitar, so then I can you know practice along. Yeah, it's very useful. Yeah, it's like jam it, but it's like. My version. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
scared the crap out of me. All right. Anybody who had... Gemini. Gemini. Yeah. Um, protect your ears, little guys. All right. I don't know how loud it is, but I don't want to be responsible for any premature hearing. Like so let's see if the rig works. Here. Guitar Tech Maddie is here. He's right there. And, uh, he he um, flew all the way up from uh, Florida. We we were just in Europe. He, we were been home for about a week. Manny came up and and brought all of just my gear because we said let's just have fun. It's completely overkill. Um, <laughs> for those of you who can't see, I'll tell you everything I have up here. But it's enough for an army of uh, awesome. guitar players. And my wife is here. Raina is here. Oh, she she just played two gigs with her band in uh, south of here in Maryland and DC, and we just drove up this morning. So we're both like. Ugh. So why don't I just uh, kind of break the ice? I'll play a song, and then one one of the things that I I love to do, what I I look forward to doing in these situations, is getting your questions and answering your questions. That's my favorite part. So. When that time comes, don't be shy. Um, All right. Personally, I, I learned so much stuff by seeing my, you know, people that I looked up to when I was younger do clinics, and they were standing right there, and I can ask Steve Morris, "Hey, how do you do this?" You know. So please um, feel free. All right, so I'm going to play. Uh, you guys know the scenes from your memory. I brought dancing maternity. I'm playing a seven string guitar, so they, oh, that's the album, there you go. So uh, that song was recorded with a seven string, so we'll give that a shot, all right? I don't know how loud it is, so beware. All right, you haven't gone to the bathroom. <laughs> say usually the only difference between that and concert is that it's all about the stance that's the only difference 
and also the arms sometimes. <laughs> That's my shtick. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's Dance of Eternity, and uh, that's from the Scenes from Memory album. A lot of you guys seem to know that. Yeah. 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 Not that's like cool. you do. I know they, all the words. You know all the words, so that one. <laughs> perfect. That album, uh, that came out 15 years ago, isn't that insane? Man. Yeah. On, did anybody see Dream Theater on the current tour? Yeah. yeah. Right over here. Amnesty. Oh, really? Amnesty. Really? Where? In Rome. Rome. Nice. Where you play Turkey? Nice. You were in Turkey? Yes, I'm in Turkey. Brazil. Wow. Brazil's coming up. We'll be in Brazil in September. Yeah, Hammerstein. Hammerstein, yes. New York was a fun show. Um, anyway, we yeah, so we played a lot of songs from uh, Scenes album and the Awake album. That came out 20 years ago. Yeah, that's insane. That's yeah. That's my heart. Thank you. So, um, as I said, um, I'm here to uh, celebrate the grand opening of the Guitar Center and also uh, to kind of show you guys and share with you guys this guitar that I'm so excited about. Um, I've been with Music Man for about 15 years, I think it's coming up on 15 years. And uh, we first started with my first signature model with them, which I worked very, very closely with uh, everybody at Music Man and the engineers and, um, and Sterling Ball. and family and, and we came up with the first one and then um, as the years went on we kind of made different versions of it we made some improvements some changes we came out with the BFR um, which is really really cool um, we came out with a baritone version um, which is another great instrument and uh, eventually as we started to celebrate the length of time I was uh, with Music Man we came out with JPX which was like a 10 year anniversary and then 11 and a 12 and a 13. The latest Dream Theater album is a 13. It's a silver looking one. Really beautiful guitar. It's right there. Is it? Yeah. Um, but anyway, all that time, uh, over the past few years, I had this whole idea to kind of really change it up a lot. And that was kind of the impetus for the, the guitar that I'm playing today, which is called The Majesty. It's called The Majesty because uh, it's that was the original name that Dream Theater had when we were really young, <laughs> long time ago. And uh, the the symbol that we use that looks like an M was basically an M for Majesty. There it is. So I have that symbol on the guitar. Um, anyway, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to change up the shape and uh, change up some of the features on the guitar. So this is this guitar kind of does everything all in one. Um, before I get into the details of it, though, I did want to share you share with you guys something about the song I was just playing, and a little bit about the technique that's involved in in this instant. I want to show you guys a little bit about how I um, orchestrate guitar and arrange guitar when writing a big song. Oh, like rock discipline. You show how to do that. Rock that's right. Yeah. Yep, rock that's discipline. Awesome. That was a long time ago. <laughs> Um, so here's the example that I want to use for you guys. One, one of the, um, the techniques that you can do, if you're playing guitar and you have a, a ton of distortion on your guitar, right? So it sounds like a mountain. That's what you're going for. A mountain of chocolate cake. So, you know, you might say, well, how do you, how do you um, create dynamics? In other words, how do you create like loud and soft? How do you, when you're writing music, playing with a band, how do you make the band kind of ebb and flow and grow and 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 uh, and have those levels of dynamics that make music really interesting? So let me show you something I do all the time. This is something I apply live, and it's also when I record guitars, it's something that I use. It all has to do with muting and unmuting and sustaining and unsustaining. And there's different levels of that. So let me show you what I mean. So in that song, there's a section that has a very simple kind of melody to it, but that goes by relatively fast. The melody is this. Okay? It almost sounds like a... <laughs> we won't get into that. Um, anyway, so that little riff there, what I do is uh, I put an open string in between the notes 
of the melody. So sounds like this. <laughs> First step, and then I'm picking it the whole time, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So if you just heard the picking, that sounds, it's just a simple thing, but the syncopation of the left hand is what's making the melody kind of pop out, right? So, in the part of this song, we're playing that as a band, we're kind of in unison, and it's building. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to make it build and build and build and build and build, but I already have distortion, I can't get any louder, how do you make that happen? So this is what I do. You mute, heavily mute those notes with your right hand. So your, your palm of your hand against the strings, so they don't ring out, right? And play that ring, so. Now, as that riff goes on, it kind of climbs up the neck. And as it's climbing up the neck, as a band, what we do is we all slowly start to unmute ourselves. Right? So, so what I do is I'm, I'm lifting my hand, lifting my hand off of the strings so that they open up. So by the time I get to the end, it's like full on. And the drums are doing the same thing. You know, they start tight, hi-hat kind of stuff build, hi-hat opens, cymbals, everything, and you, you feel this sense of dynamic rise, even though the volume of our instruments really stay the same because, you know, again, we're playing with all this distortion, you can't really get louder. So let me demonstrate what that sounds like, right? <laughs> You hear it kind of grow, right? Now, I'm just one guy playing there right now, and you get you kind of got the effect. So if the whole band does that, then you're gonna you're gonna feel the music in a more emotional way. You're gonna grow with it, and, and you know it doesn't just hit you in one level. So that's something I would do live to to help the music grow like that. Um, and it's it's also the way that I record and arrange the guitars. Let me give you a few examples of that. So let's say um, before, I, when I was testing the guitar, I played the mirror, right? Yeah. So the yeah. mirror riff is very muted. The whole, all the verses, right? And the verses. Okay. In contrast, the chorus of that sound song goes like this. Right, so do you see what I did? What I'm doing is I unmuted my hands. It's a very simple technique. It almost sounds like, why are you even showing me this? But it's amazing how often it happens in a song. And if you don't do that, how the music just kind of stays stagnant. And you want it to always be kind of moving the listener. It's, a, it's just a compositional device. It's a compositional device, yep, yeah, exactly. Um, let me give you another example. On the new album, The, the Enemy Inside, All right? Listen to the verse riffs, they go like this. So that's very tight, muted. I'm, I'm muting the strings. I'm playing these little two note chords. When I get to the chorus, I go like this. Okay, so you, get, you sense that growth. So the verses kind of come, come in, and then the choruses explode. Now another technique, um, besides just unmuting the strings, 
is I, I add ringing strings that are in the key that would make it more interesting. So in that case, I added an open G, like an open B. And that helps to kind of give it that, like, sort of, uh, I don't know what you call that. It just grows, it opens up. Um, the other thing I do is uh, with effects. Um, chorus is a great effect for doing that. So literally when I hit the chorus of the song, I turn on the chorus. Um, yeah, so it goes from, from this tight sound to this. Yes, absolutely. So you guys, you guys get it. Um, it's the type of thing that's like, it's almost, um, I don't know, it's not really talked about a lot. It's not, maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not. But to me, it's something that I con very consciously am aware of at all times. Resonance. Have, what's that? Resonance. Resonance? Yes, wherein all the notes come together, they form a resonant chord. I love it. It's absolutely. It all resonates. Yep, and it's a contrast to the other technique. So, yes, Nightmare Remember does that too. Absolutely. You, you, now that I, sh I showed you this, go back and listen to these songs. You'll hear it all the time. You'll be like, man, now it's getting boring. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so he's asking when I record. Um, do I just record one track or double track? Yeah, I, I most of the time double track all of the rhythm guitars. So I do one pass and then uh, pan that over and then I have the new one that I'm about to record in the other ear and I match that and that's a great guitar sound right there. You don't really need too much more than that. Um, some other tricks uh, that you could do is you can put chorus on one of those so that it almost gets this sort of you know, a little bit displaced, wider sound. So I do that sometimes as well. The, the lead tracks, I generally just do one. Yeah, but the rhythm tracks to get that big sound. Now the way that I emulate that live is I have a stereo rig and I have effects that will kind of make the sound wider. Cool, good questions. Oh, something's cranking. What's that? How do I write the scales? Oh, how do I practice scales? Um, how do I practice scales? I guess uh, there's several several different ways. To me, one of the best things that I ever learned um, a long time ago is uh, in preparing to go to Berkeley College. They have their method of uh, of guitar teaching, the Berkeley uh, Modern Method for Guitar, and in those books they had the scales by position. So you learn on guitar, you learn an entire key by learning the position of the scale, like in, in this part of the neck, in this part of the neck. You know, it's kind of like, um, you know, try, if you look at Manhattan Island and you tried to learn that whole thing, you'd probably be completely overwhelmed and lost. But if you just kind of like learning a little neighborhood, it's not so bad. So the guitar, I learned the neighborhoods of the position. So, you know, the basic E minor or G major. There's one position there, and you practice that. That's the next one. And you just, you know, so forth up the neck, and you get all the positions. Yeah, yeah, then once you have it sort of uh, this way, you know, by blocks, then you can work on diagonally. So you just combine, you know, and if, even if you take little smaller sections, like let's just say the first six notes, and you play it in octaves, you'll have all the positions of that key, and then you learn this much of it. So it's a great, you can apply it to any scale. So it's a great question. Yeah. 
using the Dorian mode yeah. in um, it, with arpeggios, the tonics, yes. and what's the other one? Damn, I forgot. Okay. Can you apply the same thing, like, like taking the tones from the modes yeah. with, like, low-key and mixing it in? Yeah. Because I've been, like, I like low a lot. I, right. I like dissonance. You know, right. you know how it says that, like, low is not sure. a good goal with this. Resolving to it is really difficult. Right. Like, can you use the okay. same spell that I bought from Dorian? Absolutely, or, absolutely. Can you take the yeah, yeah. So, so he's asking. You know, I, I've taught some things in the, the Wild Stringham uh, column that Guitar World has, both in print and, and online. You can you can see that. And I talk about how to use modes and apply them. And anything that I that I talk about in a certain key or a certain mode can always be applied to any of them. You know, um, you just have to change the notes. Um, if if you're in A. And uh, you know, in this example, if you were mentioning like the pentatonic, right? Right, the Dorian with it. So then you have right. If you wanted to take that same technique and apply it to mix over here, like you said, yeah. So Dorian would be like. You just have to change the notes. You just if Dorian went. You know, there we go. Yeah, you just have to, yeah, just change up the notes. But the the um, the way that it, it revolves around the pentatonic will just be slightly different. So in other words, instead of the Dorian version being over here, the pixelated might go. So that one note is the difference between that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you can apply any of those. Absolutely. Just just change up the notes and make it fit. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. What's up? Um. As as far as uh, he's asking me about acoustics and. Uh, if I get uh, picky about the setup of it, right? Filing down saddles, things like that. I don't think I do. You know, I mean, the biggest thing, I don't play a lot of acoustic, first of all. Um, when I use it in the studio, I use it generally uh, either to do a strummy section or to support a clean section. So I'm playing arpeggios. So the biggest thing for me is I don't want it to buzz. I want the notes to come out clean. As long as that's happening, I'll suffer through high action, you know, my hands will be killing me by the time I'm done. Um, it, it's kind of like, you know, leg day in the gym or something. I just, I just don't look forward to it. Um, but the end result is that, you know, we're going to get a nice clean performance. I don't do like a lot of soloing and stuff on the acoustic, so. So I guess my answer is no, I never really got into details. Of course, Maddie sets up the guitars, you know, and they all feel great, so. John? That's great. Yeah. What was the motivation going towards a music man uh, from your prior guitars that you used? Uh, he's asking me why um, did I go towards music man. Um, I, I changed about 15 years ago. Um, there, there's a lot of things I wanted to, to do with the guitar. Um, and that music man was 100% willing yeah. and equipped to do, like have a seven string version, which I didn't have prior. Um, I've always loved the guitars, you know, I, I would go into music stores and pick up a Music Man guitar and be like, man, this thing is awesome. It just, it looks incredible. It plays amazing. The quality is like so incredible. So I always really loved the guitars. And um, I had a relationship with them from using the volume pedals. Oh, wow. And uh, Steve Morse is managed by the same person who manages us. So yep. he had the connection there. Yep. And we started talking, and uh, it was uh, definitely one of the best uh, professional decisions I've ever made. Um, was going with Music Man, and it turned out to be an incredibly great personal decision as well, because I feel like um, we're a big family, and uh, I just love those guys, and they they love the art and the spirit of making guitars 
um, and contributing to that. So it's an incredible relationship. It's really amazing. Yeah, thank you. So um, after all these years of being with you, yeah, the marks and using their pickups. Yeah. Why after like ten, twelve years you decide to put a preamp on it? Sure. All right. So his his question is: uh, I've been playing guitar for a long time. Demarzio's forever. Um, starting with the thirteen, we we put a preamp in the guitar. So why do, why am I putting a preamp in the guitar? All after all this time, why? Um, well, a couple of different reasons. One is the technology got better, and it was something that Music Man has had been working on, and they were like, you should check this out. It's really cool. Um, second is that things that you can do with a preamp in the guitar, like have an onboard boost, is a really, really great thing. This guitar has that, so if you're playing and you want to get louder, you just press it. <laughs> yeah. You press the volume pedal, the volume pedal, I'm sorry, the volume knob. It pops out and it, you can make it increase by like 20 dB. Yeah. If you had a clean sound, you really would hear the volume. Let me see. It's going. Yeah. yeah, so on clean, you're going to hear the volume. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Right? If, you, if your guitar is, if the amp is already distorted, you don't really hear a gain, um, you know, volume increase. You hear a gain increase. What a jump. It's Big jump. Photos. What's that? Yeah, it's kind of like having an onboard, you know, clean pedal boost. That you can just, it's right on the volume control, really easy. And the other reason is that um, I use guitar cables, and uh, there's a lot of nonsense from, you know, the guitar cables are great, they're the best ones, but even, you know, having said that, um, you might get some microphonic sounds, you might get loss of tone. With the preamp, it's like buffered out, and just, you don't get any of that. It's clean, it's pure, it's exactly what the pickups are supposed to do. And it just hits the amp beautifully. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it boosts it back up, so you have no loss. But great question. And also, just real quick, I just got myself a Greenscape too. Great chorus manipulation. That was awesome. What was just one of these? You should have just mentioned that you use the chorus and distortion to like bring the notes out. Yes. Do you ever use it to like when you're doing like rhythm crunchy things? Yeah. Oh, you do. I sure do. Yeah. All right, so he, he was mentioning, I mentioned chorus before, right? I have a pedal with TC Electronics called the Dreamscape, which is a, a chorus flanger vibrato pedal based on their original chorus pedal that, that I've used for a long time. So I mentioned before that you can put it on those big open sounds. But yeah, I, I use it on the, the tight, crunchy stuff, sure. Yeah, whatever, you know, whatever sounds good. Yeah, it doesn't just have to be on the one. Yeah. Um, he's asked me if uh, I struggle with the guitar being maybe in tune in some region and not in another. Um, I'm, I'm just asking this because yeah. I thought it was depending on the price of the guitar. So once I, I bought an extensive guitar, <laughs> it, it 